Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back and watching. I appreciate it, hope you're doing well. Staying safe, taking care of yourselves, all those kind of things. And if you're new here, I'm Jim, great to meet you. Thanks for coming by. I make tutorial videos here every week where I show, show you how I edit my photos using various software products. However, today is not a tutorial. Today is a first impression video of Affinity Photo. I have been doing videos here for over four years. And during that time, there's been a few instances when I've said, hey, what else would you like me to cover? I do a lot of stuff around Luminar, which I love, Aurora HDR, which I love, Topaz products, which I love. I also love On One, although I haven't done as many videos, but I've done some videos around that. I've even done a couple of Lightroom, and I like Lightroom quite a bit, but I just don't make a lot of videos about it. But the one thing that everybody kept saying was, hey, Jim, what about Affinity Photo? How does this compare to Affinity Photo? Jim, what do you think about Affinity Photo? And the truth is, I had no idea because I had never had Affinity Photo until now. So this is my first impression video of Affinity Photo. And I will tell you my first impression is, it's kind of like, wow. I mean, it's a, it's a great product, but I don't think it's for everyone. So I want to talk about that. It's super capable, but um, I would say it probably has a learning curve that is steeper than a lot of other products. So it's going to depend, I think, on what you're looking for and more specifically, what you need and how much time you're willing to invest to get up and running with it. I'm fairly competent at editing with various software products. I've used a lot of them over the years, and some I'm better at than others. Um, this one's, honestly, I'm looking at it sometimes, and I'm like, what? Like, how does this work? What do you do? So I've been on their website. They've got a lot of tutorial videos. And uh, to answer the obvious question, I have no idea if I'm going to start doing tutorial videos on Affinity as well. I currently don't really have plans for that because I've got my hands full. But I've heard about it so much for so long that, to use that old expression, curiosity killed the cat. So let's take a look at this thing. Here's a photo. This is a raw photo. Now, the first thing you're going to notice if you've ever used Photoshop is that the interface to me is very Photoshop-like. And I have to admit, I'm kind of turned off by, by Photoshop. I've never really used it. I'm not particularly good at it. I don't really like it. I find it kind of complicated unnecessarily, and I don't really feel like it was made for photographers. That's all Photoshop. This, while it reminds me of Photoshop, definitely has a diff different feel to it, although it's reminiscent of Photoshop. You can see here, you've got uh, tools down the left-hand side, you've got tools across the top, and of course, you've got a histogram and things like that uh, on the right-hand side. Now, it may look like there's not a lot of tools here, but let me point out, this is a RAW file. So, of course, it has RAW editing, it has layers, it has HDR merge, it has panorama stitching. It has focus stacking, it has lens correction, it has a lot of stuff. And that's why I said it may not be for everybody. It's gonna depend, I think, on what your needs are. But when you bring a RAW file into Affinity, the first thing it'll do is launch you into one of the, actually, when you bring any photo into Affinity, the first thing it will do is launch you into one of these little sections here across the top. And as I hover over them, you can see that they have names. There's Photo Persona, which is where you would normally go if it's not a raw file. There's the liquify persona. This is develop persona. That's why there's not a lot of tools on the right-hand side because I'm in basically the raw develop module. It's called the develop persona. There's also tone mapping persona. That's for HDR. And then over here is export persona. Again, to, uh, to export your photos, you have a, a particular persona for that. To me, a persona is like a workspace. It's tools uh, basically designed for that specific thing. If it's a raw file, here's kind of where you want to start. So let me show you. You can come in here and you can use exposure. Maybe I want to brighten the exposure a little bit. Maybe I want to add a little bit of contrast, a tiny bit of clarity. Uh, maybe bump up the saturation of the vibrance because I like that. Maybe take the white balance and click it to the left. Maybe give it a little bit of tint just because I like that. And let's pull up the shadows a tad as well. And there you go. Let's say I've finished developing my raw file and I'm happy with it. Then you hit click develop. And as you will see, it now drops you over to this persona, which is the photo persona. And I think the first thing you'll notice is more tools on the left hand side, a whole lot of them and tons of tools slash filters, whatever you want to call them on this right hand side. So you've got levels, you got white balance, HSL, you have so much stuff. And no, this is not a tutorial. As I said, I'm not getting into all of this because honestly, it would be like a 10 hour video and nobody's got time for that, um, least of all me. So um, there's a lot of things you can do. There's a lot of power. And no, I haven't used them all because again, I haven't had time. This is a first impression video. So I've watched a few videos on their website. I've played around with a couple of photos, but to be honest, 
to give a true first impression, I wanted to go in a little bit blind. I didn't wanna come in here and say, let me show you everything you can do because to me, that's not really a first impression. A first impression is a little bit of me trying to figure out how it works um, and, and trying to stumble my way through it. And, and that's something I wanted to point out is because it has all these tools and these different workspaces and all the, all the filters on that side, all the tools on this side, I feel like it's, it's super, super comprehensive. It's, um, in many ways, it's an all-in-one product, although the thing I don't see is like a library or catalog module. I, if it's there, I'm not aware of it. But again, I've spent very little time, but there's a lot you can do. So that's neither good nor bad. It, again, I think it's, it's, the answer is, as with many things in photography, it depends. But you can do a lot, and if you're looking for a pretty much an all-in-one and from an editing standpoint, if you're willing to invest the time, this could be your product. But again, the learning curve, I think, is gonna be fairly steep. A caveat there is, if you're super fluent in Photoshop, this will probably, probably feel somewhat familiar. I'm not a Photoshop guy, as I said earlier. Therefore, to me, I'm a little bit like, you know, what is this? I, I get the tools and the filters over there. Some of the stuff over here on the left-hand side is very Photoshop-like, uh, but you know, you can remove spots. I think it's it's one of these. Uh, there's an in-painting, yeah, here it is, in-painting brush tool, and you can just click on that, and it'll just take those spots out. So, you know, it works very well. I found that the spot removal is super capable. Um, I'm gonna go back to the hand tool. You can move around, you can do lots of things. There's layers, I mean, honestly, there's a whole lot. I also wanna show you real quick the HDR merge function because I think it's pretty cool that that's included in addition to all these other aspects that I've already talked about. Okay, so let's say I wanna do an HDR merge. I'm gonna say, you can see here, panorama stack, HDR merge, focus merge. I'm gonna say HDR merge, grab a three exposure bracket set and drop it in here, do a little tone mapping. So I get this window, I'm gonna click add. I gotta go find these files. Okay, here they are. I've clicked highlight, highlighted them. I say open and you can see it's got my three different files here. Um, you can automatically align based on perspective, things like that. You can do noise reduction. I'm just gonna turn that off and you can check or uncheck tone map. I'm gonna say okay and let it generate this HDR merged photo. Okay, here we go. Here's my merged HDR photo. That took about 30 seconds for it to merge them tone map them and give me this output. You can see it has a few kind of preset kind of looks on the left hand side. You can click on them and there's dramatic, there's a high contrast black and white, that sort of thing. I'm gonna go for natural. And then on the right hand side, you've got some tone mapping adjustments. You can reduce the tone compression, which is basically that HDR kind of look. You can increase or decrease uh, local contrast. I'm gonna give it a little bit more because honestly, I mean, if I'm making an HDR of a beat up old place, I kind of want it to be grungy. You can increase or decrease exposure. You can kind of see all this stuff. I'm gonna give it a little bit of contrast, a little bit of vibrance. I'm gonna do white balance, maybe a little bit bluer just to soften some of that uh, brightness and maybe pull down the highlights. One thing I noticed is um, I didn't quite get the same um, uh, recovery, for lack of a better word, of that window in the back that I'm kind of uh, hovering my mouse over as I did using the same image in Aurora HDR. So, um, you know, just, this is an off the cuff experiment. I did not do an in-depth comparison, just to be clear. Um, but anyway, you can adjust all these things. And then one, again, once you like it, you can say apply and it'll drop you back into the photo persona and allow you to get access to all these other tools and filters to continue doing your editing. So. It, once you get your hands around how this works, like an HDR merge is gonna be in one persona, and then once you accept it, it goes to the photo persona. A raw file is gonna be in the raw develop, or I guess they call it develop persona. Once you make those changes and accept it, it goes to the photo persona. Once you kind of figure out how this works, um, it starts to make a little bit more sense. I haven't done a focus stack. I haven't done any panorama stitching. Those are not things I've historically shot. So I may try to do that just to test it out. But I just wanted to give a quick preview, not even a preview, just a first impression video. Um, I'll put a link to the Affinity site down below, not an affiliate link, I'm not an affiliate with them, I don't even know if they have a program, um, but I just wanted to check it out because I've heard about it so much from so many of you. And you know, my first impression is there's, there's, there's some good things and I think some things that are maybe not as good. The good things are, it's outside of the Adobe ecosystem. A lot of people just wanna leave Adobe because they don't wanna pay the subscription fee every month. Um, and and t at $10 a month, roughly, for the Photoshop and Lightroom combination, uh, you would pay for this 
in uh, five months because this is a $50 product. For me, it was a worthwhile $50 gamble because that closet back there is full of stuff I've bought over the last 10 or 12 years for my photography that I had to have, and many of these bits and bobs and devices or whatever were 50 bucks or more, and they're sitting in the closet and I'm doing nothing with them. So worst case, I thought, you know what? I'll learn something new, and that's something that um, I like about um, Affinity. It causes me to think differently. I think it forms new kind of neural pathways, which I think helps fire up my creativity and makes me better at editing and the products that I do use every day because I do not use this every day. It's a first impression video. I've used it a handful of times with a couple of different images, but that's one of the things I like. To me, it was a worthwhile $50 spend um, for that reason. So to go back to my good points, I want to check my notes here. Um, $50 non-Adobe it's super powerful and it's very comprehensive. I mean, HDR merge, raw develop, tons of tools, tons of filters, focus stacking, panos, layers, lens correction. It's got a lot of stuff, most of which I never, I did not cover here and I may never cover. Um, but the challenging things, I think, I think it's not quite as intuitive to learn as something like Luminar, for example, uh, or some of the Topaz apps, or even On One, Lightroom, things like that. I think they're a little bit more intuitive. Can you learn this? Absolutely. There's, uh, there's some great videos on the, uh, on the Affinity website, and I'm fairly certain that there's people that are making a lot of videos about Affinity on YouTube. I recommend, if you're interested, checking those out. If you're willing to spend $50, get it. It's super cool, and maybe if you're like me, you think $50 is, is, is worth it for a new tool that maybe you'll use, and at the very least will cause you to learn some stuff and think differently. Um, but um, you know, if you're looking to get outside of the Adobe ecosystem, this is a very powerful tool that does a lot of things. It's very Photoshop-like, so to me that's kind of a negative because again, I don't think of Photoshop as being very photography friendly. Personal opinion, feel free to disagree, that's fine. Um, and, and for me, the other, um, I don't know if this is a negative, I think this is a question you have to ask yourself before you get it, and that is, do you need this? Like, do you need all of that stuff? I don't really know that I need it. I'm willing to do it because I get questions, and frankly, I'm curious because so many people have asked me about it over so many years that I'm just like, you know what, I'm just getting the dang thing, and I'm going to try it, and I'm willing to throw $50 at it just in case, and I'm glad I got it. I think it's cool, but I think depending on your skill level. If you're very good at Photoshop and into advanced edits and doing a lots of different things, this is probably well worth $50. If you're newer to photo editing or you don't like complicated tools and layers and lots of different buttons and all this kind of interface seem unintuitive or scary or whatever to you, probably not for you. Um, and I think the other question to ask, it, which kind of goes along with do you need it, and that is what are you gonna do with your photos, what are you trying to do? If you're looking for basic edits to make a little bit prettier picture, there's a lot of other ways to do that that are much easier. Luminar AI comes to mind, which is coming out this fall, and we'll have a lot of AI generated options for you that will make the editing process quicker and easier. But um, again, I think those are a couple of questions to ask yourself. Do you need all this? What do you want to do with your photos? But great product very inexpensive, great way to get out of the Adobe ecosystem, super powerful, super capable and amazing and comprehensive, a little bit intimidating, a lot to learn, learning curve is pretty steep, and I'm curious if you ask yourself, do you really need this, what the answer is. So that's my first impression of Affinity. I may come back after I use it more and give a, I'll call it a second impression. Um, good product, thank you for watching. I, I don't know if I've answered any questions for you, but I just wanted to give this a whirl, see what I thought about it. So. That's it for today, my friends, my first impression video of Affinity Photo. I'm going to go play with these photos a little bit more, see what else I can come up with, and I'll talk to you soon. You guys take care of yourselves out there. Stay safe. I'll see you soon, and adios.